So how different are Swiss Italian from standard Italian spoken in Italy? Hello noble ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy, the channel where we explore how to learn languages in the most fun and effective way possible. And let's say that you are not only a language student, but you're a very passionate one. When you think about French, you're like, wow, I would love to become fluent in French, but you also like Italian, and you also like German, and you really don't know how to make your mind, which one should you study? Well, if that's your situation, you should absolutely go to Switzerland. The reason being that Switzerland as a nation is very multilingual, in the sense that it is divided in areas, geographic areas, called cantons. Now, if you go to the north of Switzerland, then the main language is German, which is also the main language spoken in Switzerland as a total with about 63 to 65% of speakers being native of Swiss German. Then if you go to the western part of Switzerland, they speak French. And then if you go to the southern part, particularly in the area called Ticino, they speak Italian. Now, given there are some differences between High German spoken in Germany and Swiss German, there are some differences between Swiss French and the French spoken in France, and even the French spoken in Belgium for that matter, and I will make dedicated video to those. But today I'd like to focus on the Italian spoken in the southern part of Switzerland, and being a native Italian speaker, Italian being my first language, how different is it from the form of Italian that I speak from Italy? Are Swiss Italian and Standard Italian mutually intelligible. All right, to address this, I'd like to talk about two specific points. First, a very briefly, a personal experience I had when I went to Switzerland, because mind you, I've actually been to Sp Switzerland between five and six times, I don't even remember, but I used to go to Switzerland a lot when I was in my late teens. And even though I spent more time in the German-speaking part of Switzerland, every time I've been to the Italian-speaking canton, I had no problems when it comes to communication. So I would enter a supermarket or a gas station, I could buy stuff, I could communicate. But how different was it? Well, accent-wise, to my ear being Southern Italian, it just sounded a lot closer to the northern variety of Italian, so the Italian spoken in some regions in the north, although perhaps sometimes with its own little flair. But of course, my personal experience was rather limited. So what we're going to do now is that I found a an entry of a journal written by a Swiss Italian native speaker. I haven't read it, I just know it's here. I haven't read it yet, so I'm gonna read it with you Let's see how much I can understand. Caro diario, so far so good. Oggi è stata proprio una giornata da dimenticare. Quando sono scesa per colazione, ho visto che la mamma aveva finito tutti gli zibak. Zibak. Okay, I have no idea. So I don't know what zibak means, literally. I understand everything else. It's saying the journal. Today was really a, a, a day I'd like to forget when I came down the stairs for breakfast, I noticed that my mom had finished all of her, or all of the zibak. I don't know what zibak is, I would have to look it up. Let's see if I can understand it from context though. Everything else would be the exact same as I would write it. Poi, uscendo di casa, mi sono impigliate le ghette nella ramina. Okay, she's saying afterwards as I was going out from my home, okay. my ghette got stuck in the ramina. Now, ghette... If I had to guess, I would say trousers, but just because it kind of sounds like an old word for trousers, even in standard Italian, but I'm not sure. So she, something that she's wearing, I suppose, maybe shoes? I, I'm gonna stick to trousers. Got stuck in the ramina. Once again, I don't know what ramina is, but it sounds similar to the word ramo in Italian, which means branch, so I would say in some sort of small branches, maybe. We'll look it up in a minute. Let me continue a little more. Volevo chiamare il Marco per farmi venire a prendere, ma, come se non bastasse, avevo il natel scarico. Okay, so here is interesting because it's saying, this person is saying, I wanted to call the Marco. Now, this is something I wouldn't do, to put the article in front of a person's first name, but they do do it in some areas of Northern Italy. So to me, this doesn't necessarily sound Swiss per se, or foreign, it just sounds Northern. To say, volevo chiamare il Marco, I wanted to call the Marco, or Mark. Um, in standard Italian it would just be, volevo chiamare Marco, volevo chiamare Marco. So this is just very Northern Italian to me. Uh, per farmi venire a prendere, so that he could come and pick me up, but, ma, come se non bastasse, as if it wasn't enough, avevo, I had, il natel scarico. Now, I have never heard <laughs> the word natel in my life. But because she's saying that she wanted to call Marco and her natel was scarico, which means it ran out of battery, uh, it, means, it must mean phone. 
Like, I understand it from the context. I, I hope so. I hope, look, you know what? Let's check these words and then we'll continue. But I would guess, my guess is phone. Okay, what the heck is a zibak? Zibak. Many Italian speakers in Switzerland enjoy a zibak for breakfast, so some kind of food. It's not a dietary supplement. A zibak is a kind of toast. Oh, like fette biscottate. Okay, so in standard I would say fette biscottate. I had no idea. I couldn't have translated this to save my life. Zibak. <laughs> never, you never stop to learn. Let's see what gette. Oh, I see. How many of you remember Scrooge McDuck's Gette? Uh, yeah, that's right. The most geographically isolated linguistic varieties are often the most conservative. You'll still find words forgotten in Italy, still spoken in Italian speaking Switzerland, I thought so. Le Gette are stockings or gaiters. So, gambaletti in standard Italian. So, it is a form of shoes. My second guess, kind of, kind of maybe some sort of boots. Typical of men clothing long ago. Interesting. Ramina, let's see what Ramina is. I'm actually enjoying this. You know those chain link fences that are often used to support a bush or just separate a road and a field? In Italian speaking Switzerland, they make it simple and instead of that long description, they just use the dialect influence word Ramina. In Italy, la Ramina is a pot of copper shavings. Well, honestly, even in Italy, I, I had never heard this word, Ramina. So it's some kind of fences? I had literally no idea. Oh yeah, Natel. Let's see if Natel is the phone. At least I get one. Natel. One of the most well-known words particular to Switzerland is Natel, a term common in every linguistic community in the country, not just the Italian-speaking region. It's used to refer to mobile phones. Okay, cool. I got one. <laughs> I got one of the specific ones from the context. Natel. Goodness gracious. Yeah, we would say telefonino. Telefonino. Il telefonino. Il telefono. Lo smartphone. Allora sono salita sulla posta. E per poco l'autista non tamponava la macchina davanti. Meno male che quello sull'altra corsia gli ha fatto i bilux. Ok, this must be... So clearly this was written by someone who is specifically using the terms that they know that we speakers of standard Italian in Italy wouldn't recognize. It's, it's done on purpose, but I think it's good. This was kind of engineered this way. It would be like a letter written by a British English speaker full of all like the trousers and lifts bonnet and boot, you know, and blinkers, like all the words that they know that you guys don't use in America, windscreen, windshield and so forth. Um, so yeah, that's how it's engineered. So you have to imagine that perhaps in a regular conversation, probably all of these wouldn't just appear at once and we would communicate no problem. But if you do give me something like this, then it does become, so it says, allora sono salita sulla posta. And then I got on the Posta, which I suppose is some kind of, I mean, posta in Italian just means post or the mail, but you don't get on the mail, so it must be some kind of transportation vehicle. And then he says, and almost the driver, so it is, got us into a wreck with a car in, in, in front. Uh, and then he says, luckily, the person on the other side of the road gave him the bilux. Lux in Latin means light. So if I have to guess it from context, I would say like the headlights or maybe the, you know, fog lights or something like that of your car. Let's, let's, let's have a look. So Posta and Bilux. Posta, Corriera, Swiss mail truck. I see. And why the heck did she get on the Swiss mail truck is then part of what I want to know. Anyway, some kind of lorry, some kind of truck. Bilux in Ticino. People driving past each other can biluxare. The verb comes from Bilux, the brand name for headlights. Okay, with two functions, main and bright. Great, so basically it means headlights. Yeah, I understood that from the context and the Latin of it, but we would never call it. We would just say, in, in standard, we would say i fari, uh, gli abbaglianti, if it's your brights, luci di posizione. I mean, we have lots of different ways to say it, but definitely Bilux is not one of those. Oggi non c'era scuola perché siamo andati in passeggiata. All right, so I would never say it this way, but I think I understand it from the context. So they're saying today there was no school because we went on a passeggiata. Now, passeggiata in Italian, standard, uh, just means we went for a walk. Andare a fare una passeggiata just means, yeah, let's just go for a walk in the park. You just walk for the pleasure of it. That's what it means. But here they, she's saying there was no school because we went on. We wouldn't say on, but they're saying in passeggiata. I wouldn't say in passeggiata, but some kind of like trip, like a school trip, perhaps. Let's see. Passeggiata, gita, yeah, school field trip, exactly. So once again, I understand it. I would never call it that, that way. But now that I know the Swiss Italian speaking people 
call it that way, I would, I would have no problem understanding it. E ovviamente ha piovuto tutto il giorno, which means, and of course, it rained all day, alla faccia di quello che avevano detto, alla meteo. That's very interesting. She's saying, regardless of what they said on the weather forecast, interestingly enough, yes, weather forecast in Italian is meteo, just like they are using it, but for them it's feminine, alla meteo. In standard, it would be il meteo. So in, in, in my version of Italian, it would be masculine, il meteo. Very interesting. Again, I could understand it, no problem, just the switching of feminine, masculine doesn't really bother me, it just sounds weird to me. Then he says, speriamo di prendere comunque una bella nota, altrimenti rischio di bocciare anche la quarta. Right, so she's talking about school, she's saying hopefully we can get a good... She calls it nota. Nota in standard would be either like the music notes, but in this case, uh, nota would be like something you write down or you jot down. Um, like in a notebook, uh, but she's using it like to mean marks, I believe, which would, would say voto in standard, so we use a different word, and it says otherwise I'm, I risk to, and then she says di bocciare anche la quarta, so she's using the verb bocciare, which means to fail in a, as a transitive verb, uh, so you fail the fourth grade, uh, we wouldn't say that, uh, we would say rischio di essere bocciato, for us it's a passive, and it becomes a risk of being failed. In standard, we use it differently. So I can see with this one, with this last one that's very interesting, uh, is that there are some syntax differences and some grammar differences as well between the way we use even the same verbs. I could understand most of it, except for like zibag, gette, I could kind of tell it was either trousers or shoes, ramina, I had no idea. Um, Natel I understood from context, Post I kind of understood, and Bilus I understood, Passeggiata, once again I understood from context but we wouldn't say it that way, but there are a few words that I wouldn't be able to explain to save my life, once again, what the heck is a Zeebuck, <laughs> that really blew my mind. Anyways, I think that this kind of gives us an idea. So Swiss Italian, absolutely mutually intelligible, but sometimes if I went into a actual conversation with a native speaker in Switzerland who speaks Italian, at uh, uh, one time a few times I might need to ask them, what's that? What does that mean? Which is kind of similar, I think, in a way to what could happen between a British English speaker and an American English speaker. Um, even more so with me, because I think if you are a Northern Italian and then you go to Switzerland, it's still kind of similar, except for these words, perhaps. But coming from the extreme deep south, Sicily, then my accent, my way of speaking, my way of using some expressions, I mean, if I spoke standard with my accent and they spoke standard with their own accent, we can communicate no problem, it would be just quite different soundly, differently sound, different sounding, but if I went on and spoke complete Sicilian, they probably wouldn't understand a word. So there is that. But anyways, very interesting, I hope you found it interesting, if you want me to talk more about Switzerland, maybe read more stuff like this uh, when it comes to the Italian side, or perhaps discussing about the differences between High German and Swiss German, and France French and Swiss French, let me know and I'll make dedicated videos. Thank you very much for joining Metatron's Academy.